On February 24th of this year, Russia invaded Ukraine. One week later, on the 2nd of March, a young mother called Julia Kowalczyk fled her hometown of Kiev to Poland. Along with her two children, they went from Poland to Tenerife, where they were greeted by their friends in Spain. I sat down today with Julia to talk about her amazing journey from the Ukraine to Spain. Let's take a listen. Where exactly are you from in Ukraine? Which city are you from? Uh, I'm from I'm from Kyiv. I was born in Kyiv and I lived in Kyiv for all my life. I had to urgently leave because of this situation. And uh, I decided to come back where I lived before because I have here friends and like a lot of support. It's, it's extremely hard to go with kids uh, into the nowhere when, where you do not have any connections. So, so you're in Kiev, you were, you were working, you had your job, you were with the startup. And what about yeah, the but... children? Were the kids in school? Yeah, my, my daughter is 11 and she went to Ukrainian school and my son is only five. So he attended the kindergarten there. Yeah, uh, yeah and now uh, all the education processes in Ukraine are stopped, of course. Even students in, in the university, they, they are not studying uh, because it's, it's impossible. A lot of um, people are suffering. Can you talk a little bit mm -hmm. about how, how was the journey? Like, how did you get out of Kiev? Did, did you take the train or what was your... Yeah, in the first day of war, uh, we left Kiev and went to a small village near Kiev. Wow. Um, with uh, the parents of my ex-husband, they are grandparents of my kids, they had a small country house there and yeah. we decided that it, it must be more quiet and uh, safe there, so we left and spent the week there and we were lucky again because the front line uh, the tanks, Russian tanks coming to Kyiv were coming from another side, so we, it was more or less quiet there, uh, but uh, during the last night that they spent near Kyiv, uh, the bridge uh, near our village uh, was uh, like uh, attacked, it, oh. it was, yeah, and I decided that it's time to do something because in a small village there is a high risk to be like a part to to, to be a part from all the world if the front line moves uh, to this yes. uh, area. Uh, th then oh. we came back to Kyiv and we went to the railway station because I knew that at that point uh, to go by train was the uh, safest way to, to live and to um, go to the western part of Ukraine mm. uh, from where you can reach Polish border and other uh, borders. So we took a train and I, I want to say that um, evacuation trains that are free for everyone, it's extremely hard to get there and uh, uh, there is a high like risk that you will be just uh, standing there yeah. uh, all night or day, like uh, eight, uh, nine hours wow. uh, of, of the way. And first we, we got into such train and we're just standing and then we accidentally <laughs> noticed that near us uh, there is another uh, train passing to the same direction and we quickly oh. switch the train and this in, in the second one uh, my kids could at least sit and sleep a, sleep a bit at night yeah. uh, but in general in one like uh, space uh, in, in the train there are like 10 in, in, instead of 4 people there are 10-15 people but that we spent the night in the train and uh, in the morning we were in Lviv in uh, it's it's a city in the western part of Ukraine yeah. and my plan was from there to take another evacuation train to Poland having escaped Kiev safely Julia and the children continue their journey to western Ukraine however at the border of Poland Julia finds that the queues are very long and it's really difficult to cross through 
was much worse than in Kyiv. Oh. So there were much more people waiting and two trains left. We were waiting like from 5 a.m. till 9 a.m. Oh, maybe. Wow. And the queue even did not move after a few two trains. So I decided to, to get out of there. We, we went to oh. the city. Uh, I did not know what to do. Uh, it was also extremely cold. So when I was uh, waiting there, uh, I found a man uh, who uh, offered to bring us in his car uh, to the border uh, when we can cross it uh, on foot. Mm. And uh, I decided to, to, to do it. Uh, I quickly booked uh, the airplane ticket to Tenerife because like my, my dream was, uh, it was uh, three or four days be before my daughter's birthday. Mm. And my dream was to get uh, celebrate uh, with my and her friends here. Yeah. I don't know why, but this was like extra motivation for me <laughs> to get to the destination uh, faster. Yeah. So I had a plane ticket and I mm. understood that I have like only uh, limited time to get to this Polish city where we had this uh, airport. Uh, he drive, uh, drove us to the border. Also like not easy because we had to wait until there are like around 100 people uh, who want to cross. At this point in the journey, hundreds and thousands of Ukrainians are attempting to cross the border into Poland. Between February 24th and March 5th alone, 400,000 people made the crossing safely. But, um, I was like very much impressed immediately after we crossed the border with the help of uh, Polish people. So starting from the hot tea and sandwiches right after uh crossing the border and ending with though i wanted to pay for example at the railway when they see ukrainian passport they just put that this is uh, a promotion help to ukrainians and give you uh, everything uh, for free it impressed me a lot and also uh, when we crossed the border um they arranged a buses um uh, the buses to um, a small town where they arranged kind of shelter for Ukrainians where they placed some beds uh, they cooked hot food there were was food for little uh, uh, kids having crossed the border safely into Poland Julia's journey has not finished now she must take a night train from the border of Poland to Katowice where she will get her flight to Spain. I had to take uh, one more like night train to, to Katowice. How were your kids feeling at this point? Like your daughter's 11 and your son is four, right? Yeah, it was, so, uh, of course, uh, hard for them as well, mm -hmm. but I tried them to feel uh, more or less comfortable. Uh, so they were like, uh, uh, they managed to sleep in the first train. Um, uh, in the second train, they also were like half sleeping, uh, but we uh, arrived to Katowice at about uh, 1 a.m. in the yeah. middle of the night. And, and yeah, we took a bus from there and my son was like half sleeping, but it was too hard to carry him. But uh, one uh, man who um, also was traveling from Ukraine, he, he helped us to, yeah. to reach to the hotel so it was all fine and this last night uh, half night we, we already were sleeping uh, in a bed and it uh, was feeling amazing <laughs> Katowice I had a flight from Katowice in Katowice. Poland to Tenerife of course kids were tired and going crazy but it did not matter anyway yeah. and here like my friend came to uh, pick us at the airport uh, crying that we did it. Although Julia and the children have now arrived safely in Tenerife in Spain, her mother, relatives and colleagues are still in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, uh, 
my mother is still in Kyiv, married for my mother. And um, yeah, uh, in the area when my mom lives in, in Kyiv, yesterday there was like an atta attack uh, uh, very close to her. And uh, yeah, she, she went uh, to, to sleep to her uh, brother's home yesterday because... Um, we don't know what lies ahead in the future if... Uh, the Russians will continue to go through Ukraine and up to Belarus. What, what's your opinion about that on the political side? Do you think that Russia will continue to bombard Ukraine or do you think it's, they will agree to a ceasefire at some point? Well, uh, I, I read some analytics that uh, actually um, uh, the Russians, they quite underestimated the efforts needed to reach their goals. Oh, so yes. their plan probably was to take Kyiv for two, three days, yeah. but it failed because as you see, I, I don't know what they are saying in the news uh, in your country, but in general, our nation is extremely united now and we help each other a lot and uh, the um, soldiers protecting us are really brave and they really want to to protect our land and our people but I'm, I'm really happy that you made it safely anyway you know you are you and the children are safe um <laughs> thank you very much for, nice. for your attention Julia, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your incredible story. And of course, we wish all the best for your friends, relatives and family members in Kyiv and the rest of Ukraine. Stay safe, everyone, and we hope to see you next time. Bye.